A built environment is a huge consume of materials and energy. It's the very easiest place to begin because there is this codification of what is a green building. LEED is a very important tool in changing how we think about design and construction. And it requires the entire team, the owner, all the designers, and the contractor to consider many things that we didn't consider prior to LEED. It's having a lower environmental impact uh, and it's a lower operating cost. It's creating a better place for the building users. We can really make the business case now and it makes sense. No longer can the environment and economic growth be at odds. And in fact, the only way to have economic growth is sustainable economic growth. And that business needs to take the lead. 30 Hudson is a million and a half square foot building. This is an early LEED building. It was one of the largest LEED certified buildings in the world. We are an entrepreneurial firm, so when we look at why go green, it's got to make sense. It's got to make commercial sense. We believe a healthy environment is the foundation for a sustainable, strong economy, and that in itself is a business case for doing the right thing as it relates to the environment. With the building of our new headquarters, we will be the largest owner of LEED certified buildings. We're rebuilding 10 million square feet of office space where the World Trade Center tower stood. Every bit of it is being built green, and every bit of it is being built green because the developers and the owners understand that this is the way of the future and economically the right thing for them to do. Toyota Motor Sales USA is about 10 million square feet of buildings in our portfolio and a really diverse range of facility types. We've been challenged to look at everything that we do and try and reduce its impact on the environment. To look at it and say, is there a way that we can improve on that process? We ship cars from here as far east as Cincinnati. On an average day here, we're going to do about 1,080 vehicles per day. We built this as a green building because we thought we could incorporate a lot of the concepts into a production facility. And it was a chance to look at what made sense. Part of Toyota's thing is continual improvement or Kaizen. We're always looking for ways to save energy, materials, resources, time, labor. So it's all part of our core philosophy. The phrase you hear is, there's never a best, there's always a better. And so you're always looking for something better. I think we're finally realizing that to be green just means to be human. And so now that we're finally, I think, making that sort of leap, it's becoming much more of a how do we build a better world, period, as opposed to how do we build better buildings. All right, here's the front of our beautiful school. 70% of the building material is actually recycled, so that's really cool. There is a thought out there that high-performance buildings cost more money. We were handed budgets and we were mandated to stay within those budgets to get a high-performance building, and, and that's what we did. This ice actually cools the air that runs through our school. We have a moral imperative to be fiscally responsible, to educate the children for an ever-changing global economy and looking beyond the future. The Sunny Boy device tells us exactly how much electricity these solar panels are giving us at this very moment. It's a wonderful, wonderful building because everywhere you go there is sunshine. It absolutely impacts the learning inside the classroom and just the general attitude of the students and, and the faculty. We save more than $100,000 a year in utility costs, so that's hard to ignore. The taxpayers are thrilled because we haven't wasted their money. We're saving money. These buildings are healthy for people. I wouldn't build buildings any other way. We really can't afford not to build buildings like this. The department wanted to create a benchmark for all the state buildings. The most important issues were addressed early on. The first was putting it in a site that was already seriously degraded over selecting a new site at the edge of the city. It is one of the first publicly owned Platinum LEED certified buildings. You know, a lot of firsts here. 
and, and we push very, very far. The building is elongated in an east-west direction, has great north and south exposure, which gives good potential for sun control. The structure of the building became the light moderating device so we could shade the glass when we had sun that would cause glare and heat and reflect the light deep within the space. When we put all of the things together, we're able to save about 56% of our total energy, making the project the lowest operating cost for any state office building in Missouri. We wanted to show the viability of using uh, as many products as we possibly could from the state of Missouri. This building, Lewis and Clark, has become the kind of national benchmark that you don't need to pay a premium. This building is located on Main Street in Norristown, PA, which is just outside of Center City, Philadelphia. There's 300 new jobs here, 300 new people that come to work in Norristown each day, and that's a real significant benefit. The way the building is organized is a large four-story atrium surrounded by open office spaces. It provides daylight throughout every space in the building. The carpeting, the furniture, the wallboard material, a lot of the steel all contain recycled content. The adhesive on the carpeting, the paints on the walls, any of the sealants that they used in the building are low VOC or no VOC, and that makes us healthier people. There's no more tangible bottom line evidence that green is good for the pocketbook than green buildings. And now as we look forward, we are committing to all of our buildings being LEED certified. In a lot of ways, a LEED certified building now is almost mainstream. As much as we thought the market was changing five years ago, it's actually changing even more dramatically now. I have two grande with American. Currently we're 14,000 plus stores. You know, we, we plan to grow over time. We want to be responsible from the standpoint of sustainable design and building in that regard. To get there, we have to use strategies that minimize our eco footprint. If you look at the sector we represent retail, it's a pretty significant piece of the built environment and we recognize that if we can get it right, perhaps we can leverage that into influencing how other retailers are doing their business. I think this is Starbucks' time to influence this particular subject, not only because we have a large building program, but because I think the world's ready for it. What's driving us is our fundamental mission to create superior workplaces for the federal worker at the best value for the taxpayer. The federal government's going to own and operate that building for at least 75 years. They're saving upwards of half a million dollars a year in energy costs. It's a huge savings to the taxpayer. In terms of setting a standard and sort of leading the way for others, whether it's renovation of our buildings or whether it's a new building, the reality is we can drive the market. My grandfather started the business here in St. Louis in 1918. The way we did the project is going to pay dividends for a long time because it's reduced the costs. But it has more dividends in how it's perceived by the people we do business with. It isn't a matter of how much more is it going to cost. It's a matter of what's the best building I can get for the money that I have. It's a subtle difference, but it's an important one. We're using 40% less energy every minute, every hour, every year. 39% less water. That whole package made tremendous sense to people. And in the end of the day, we never have regretted it for a minute. Uh, it was one of the best things we've ever done. Our goal is to be on the leading edge, not the bleeding edge. And our sense is that we can create equal or greater cash on cash returns on our investment with better appreciation than we can using traditional methods. We wanted to be in a space that really reflected our values and what we do every day. So we wanted to create a lab that we could show clients. It's all on the shelf technology. The materials are environmentally preferable from recycled content to low toxicity. And we ended up with a space that has a great indoor environmental quality. Our sense is that within the next three to five years, this will be the new normal. And anyone who hasn't done this will have a building that doesn't appreciate as fast and isn't worth as much. We believe that the customers of the future, especially the discerning customers, will choose our products, 
not because they are environmental, but because it's a differentiator between products that aren't. Within Kennecott land, we have approximately 93,000 acres here in the Salt Lake market. At build-out, we would expect upwards of 200,000 homes to be constructed. Roughly 50% of the homes that the U.S. will need by 2030 have not been built. So the way those are going to be built is going to make a very big difference for the U.S. and, and for the world. When we started, we mandated Energy Star Homes, for example, right at the beginning. We were one of the few communities at the time to do that. It's certainly going to make a very, very big difference in terms of air quality, in terms of land conservation, water conservation. One homeowner isn't going to make that big of a difference in the global picture on what is happening with our use of energy. But lots of homeowners doing it can be quite powerful. You can't hire people under 30 nowadays if you're not built around a commitment to doing things the right way, whether you call it sustainability, green, whatever. And eventually what you're going to see, and you're seeing a little bit already, is access to capital. It isn't necessarily driven based upon profit or shareholder value, although we do believe that, that long term those things are, are aspects of it. But we believe it's the right thing to do. Beginning, the builders perhaps were a little bit skeptical and didn't see the full value of sustainability. But for the past 18 months, Daybreak has been the fastest selling community in Utah. It's an opportunity for better efficiency and to save money, to be more uh, effective in the way we do business and to serve our customers and our communities better. And it's important to the world, I think, as we uh, see what's happening uh, across the world. We've got to do our part, and, and we're doing everything we can. Uh, Adobe operates to a set of core values where we like to empower our employees. So that's one of the things that encouraged us to start looking into, like green and energy savings. You can't manage what you can't measure. So we have very good monitoring and control of all the building systems. And that's kind of critical. One of the largest operating expenses for a commercial office building is uh, electricity. So we began with some energy conservation projects and expanded that to natural gas and water and dealing with our waste management. We've detailed 64 projects to date, and then we've been able to come up with a pretty good annual savings. We've spent about $1.4 million on them. We've received incentives or rebates totaling $389,000, and we've actually reduced operating costs $1.2 million a year. About a nine and a half month simple payback and 121% return on investment. I was one of the naysayers saying, no, green costs money, it doesn't save money. And boy, I'll tell you, once I started seeing the cost savings, I'll jump right up on that bandwagon with anybody else because it works. We have never found that by aiming towards the highest level of environmental and social responsibility that there has ever been a equity return hit. And in fact, what we're finding is higher occupancy rates and uh, higher rents, actually, because we're building better communities this way. We call it the Center for Health and Healing, and it's either physician office space or um, ancillary services like imaging or laboratory or um, outpatient surgery. We have four floors of research space, including two highly sophisticated wet lab floors. It's sort of a vertical village of mixed uses. We've been doing green building since the firm was founded in 1996. We were able to forge a team that really got the notion of what it is to do what I call integrated design and construction. The challenge from the developer was to save 60% more energy than a building built to current codes, but to do that with 25% less money up front. When we bought into this conceptually, we told Gertie Edelin that, you know, this is what we have, guys. Um, this is what we need in the building. Build it for us for that price. And they said, we think we can do that. It's like the sun's going to shine, you know. The wind's going to blow, it's going to rain. These are things that are going to happen. You might as well take advantage of them and try to divert those resources and use them and give back to nature. 
micro turbines generate a third of the electricity for our building. And the waste heat that comes off that process is captured instead of going into the atmosphere. We've seen in the last seven years a tremendous shift in the awareness of our tenants, of our buyers, in terms of asking, even demanding, the kinds of features that we're incorporating as a matter of course in our projects. The bar continues to get higher and higher. You know, the goals on this project are a little bit outdated. I mean, right now we're designing living buildings. We're designing buildings that use no energy off-site. There's an emerging trend of creating uh, ecological footprint positive buildings. Using suitable technology, they become energy neutral and in many cases energy positive. Understanding that perhaps our role as humans is to really contribute to the health of the place. And that's, a, that's where I think this can really go. We're absolutely convinced that we've got about 10 years in which to change. You know, global warming is a reality and it's only going to get worse. What we're attempting to do is to demonstrate that that change isn't only possible, it's really good business. I believe businesses will be left in the competitive dust if they do not respond. As the, as the public, as the market demands, the powers with the people. But there's not a CEO in this world worth her or his salt who will ignore the voice of the marketplace.